I've been doing this YouTube thing now for almost two years. It'll be two years in September. And one of the things that I have come to truly despise about being a YouTuber is the act of editing videos. I can't stand editing videos. And honestly, it's not the, the editing of the videos that is the hard part, like, or the part even that I despise so much. Like, I understand that videos need to be edited. And, well, let's just stop there for a second. My videos need to be edited. You wouldn't think that they really would, because it's usually just me sitting in front of a camera, bullshitting for, you know, 20 minutes or whatever, and then moving on. But if I didn't edit my videos, I would have no audience. <laughs> because my speech pattern is not what you would call cohesive, coherent. One of those words. I don't actually know. Uh, I'm sure that it's one of those words. The point is, is that, and they probably actually both apply now that I think about it. The, the point is, is that when I talk, I say a lot of filler words. Like, I have become a really big proponent of the word, um, you know, going through all these words that everybody uses for filler words. And I'm a big use, user of them. Like, sometimes every other word, when I first started the YouTube channel, I swear to God, every other word was the word, um. It was horrible. Now, I've gotten way better. I like, get way, way better. Like, first of all, those first videos on the channel... Those weren't edited at all. So you can go back to watch those videos and you'll just notice how horrible they are in terms of like actually getting the point across because I have so many filler words in there. It takes double the amount of time for me to actually spit out what I'm trying to say. I've gotten better, but I still use filler words all the time. And one of the ways I've gotten over using filler words is the way they suggest to do it, is to just not say anything. When you think you're going to say the word, um, you just be quiet. So when I need to figure out what the word I'm trying to figure out, out is next, what that didn't come out right. When I'm trying to figure out what the next word is, <laughs> uh, you know, I have to just be quiet for a second. Otherwise, I'll fill that space up with a filler word. Now, you're probably wondering what the point is, right? Well, I, I wanted to talk about video editing. And the reason why I had to video edit is because of those filler words. I mean, there are other reasons, but that's the big one. The problem I have isn't that they need to be edited, like I said. My problem comes down to the fact that there are no good video editors on Linux. At least in terms of things that I can actually try and use. Now, let me talk about my video editing journey for a little while. For, for the most part, my video editor that I've used for the last two years is this one here. This is Caden Live, and I am so happy that Caden Live exists. Let me just put it out there right now. Caden Live is a fantastic piece of software, and if it didn't exist, Linux would be screwed when it comes to video editing. I'm going to just say that out loud. This piece of software allows so many people to do so much more on Linux than they would be able to if it didn't exist. And that's me included. This is still the video editor that I use. That being said, Kden Life sucks. I, I can't help it. It's it's not good. Well, okay, let me put out let me change my opinion there for a minute. It is good. It's just buggy as shit. Like, like this thing is so it's it's so buggy and it's a KDE project like it's a it's a it's a project that comes from the KDE consortium or whatever it is. And you can tell it like they add features all the time and they if you've been on YouTube for any amount of time, you'll remember that there was like a four year four or five year period there where YouTube was changing something on the on their front page or on their channel pages every single day. That feels like what Caden Live is to me. They change stuff all the time. Every time I do an update, there's something that's different. And while I'm all for new features, like I like KDE Plasma, I like the fact that there's new features all the time. But the problem when you introduce new features all the time, you introduce instability. And instability means bugs. Like this thing is so buggy and it's gotten so much worse over the last few months for me. Like I didn't used to actually have a problem. Like every once in a while I'd come across a bug. Every once in a while the thing would crash and just piss me off. But that was very rare. Over the last two or three months, they've added a whole bunch of different features 
and they've changed things for what I can assume is no apparent reason, just for reasons. Like the render window. So let me just show you this. The Let me see if I can show you this. This is the render uh, window. And, oops, cancel that. I don't actually want to render the damn thing. <laughs> this is what it would look like. This is fairly new. Now, this is the expanded version. And it's mostly the same as it was before. But the problem is is that it's not the same as it was before, and for whatever reason, I cannot figure out what preset I was using before they made the change, because I didn't remember the change during the update. That's the biggest problem I have with the Flatpak version, is whenever they do an update, it forgets all of my settings. Like, I have a favorite here that I've been using now for a little while, the last couple of weeks, I guess, since they did the update, and when they did the update in the Flatpak, it forgot that, and it just I had to figure it out again. And the thing is, is that when you... <laughs> the, the, this preset is important, so I don't know if, if you've watched the channel for a few weeks now. First of all, welcome to the channel. But you might remember that there was a video that I did on Worm. It's a window manager. And the first version of that video that I uploaded was absolutely atrocious when it comes to quality. Like, it looked like it was 144p. It was horrible. It was like 8-bit. <laughs> and that's because of this. That was right after the update, and I didn't realize that it changed. So I just, you know, assumed that my settings were the same as always, and hit the render queue, and just, you know, went about my merry way. But of course, it had changed, and I didn't realize it, so I uploaded it and walked away from my computer. And I got all these messages in the comments like, Matt, this, the quality of this video is garbage. So I went back into this and realized that this had changed. And if that was just the one time, it would have been fine. But like a week and a half later, they changed it again. So my presets were gone again. So I've gone through several different presets. I'm still not sure which one that I was using for. I'm pretty sure I'm back on the one that I was on before. Not sure, though. And the weird thing is, is that the, quali the, the file size now varies widely. And it has no bearing on how long the video is. So, for example, yesterday's video was 30 minutes long or thereabouts. It might have been a little bit shorter than that, 28, whatever. That was a 4 gigabyte file when I rendered it out. The day before, I did a 12 minute video, which is, unless I'm, you know, bad at math, half the time, but it was double the file size. It makes no sense to me. And while I don't really care about file size, I got plenty of hard drive space, I can store those things no problem. What The reason why that matters is because when I upload those things, especially when I'm uploading late at night and want to try to get it uploaded before midnight, if the file size is bigger, it takes longer to upload. It takes longer to process. It takes longer to do the YouTube checks. And that's the reason why the other day I had to take a day off because I didn't have that video processed in time because it was like a 8 gigabyte file. It was ridiculous. So that's just one of the changes and one of the bugs that I've saw, seen over the last few weeks. Another one that I've been experiencing, and I don't want to, <laughs> this wasn't a uh, let's bash Caden live thing. That's not what I really wanted to do. I kind of meandered into that because I've been, I've been so frustrated with it. Like, for example, let's, I'm, I'm, I want to talk about the specific bugs again right now. Let me just talk a little bit about yesterday's video, just for a moment, because this is the reason why I'm making this video today. Yesterday's video was about a half an hour long. It was about 32 minutes unedited and it I think I got it down to like 26 or 27 or something like that it took me three and a half hours to edit and that's because every single time I did a cut Caden live would ding at me and tell me to stop dragging the clip like I I don't drag the clip when I do a cl cut nobody does that's not the way it works you know I would I just had the scrubber where it needed to be cut hit my cut shortcut and it's supposed to cut but instead it dinged at me so I had to re-click on the spot where I wanted to cut it and then redo the cut shortcut to get it to cut. So I, every cut I had to do basically twice. And I was just, I was so frustrated at the end of it. I was like, I need a new video editor. I need a new video, video editor. And the thing is, I want to go back to my video editor, you know, journey as I was talking about earlier. I've tried most of them. Like, I've tried most of them. I've tried Shotcut. I've tried PTV. I've tried to install DaVinci Resolve, but I can't get it to work on my hardware. I don't know what's going on there. I think I don't know if it's a hardware problem or if it's the fact that, for whatever reason, it doesn't recognize that I have Pulkit Agent installed, uh, running, 
Like, because it needs a Polk kit agent installed, you know, up and running in order for it to run, which I don't understand. Like, why do you need a Polk? Polk kit is for pseudo access. You don't need pseudo access. I, it doesn't make any sense to me. But anyways, um, <laughs> this is just this video is gonna be full of just me mini ranting about everything that is wrong in my life about when it comes to video editing. <laughs> um, anyways, I you know I've tried all those. I've tried Olive, which is still an alpha, and it looks like it's an alpha and it feels like an alpha at least again in my experience so i've tried all of them and they all have the pros like they're all they all have some things that are going for them but they all have major problems Caden live seems to be the one that is the most stable which is kind of laughable given the things that i've just talked about uh, but the thing is is that linux deserves a better video editor it really does we should be grateful, and I am grateful that we have what we have. So I don't want to come across as ungrateful. But what we have is not good enough. It's just not. And I I know I've spent a lot of time on Caden Live because that's the one that I've used the most. This is my plea to the Caden Live developers: please stop editing f features, stop making changes, just put a complete freeze on new changes and and features and all that stuff no more for the next year none of them i don't want any more new features i don't care if it's the best new feature you've ever seen in your life i don't want it right now i don't want it that can come later focus on making this the most stable video editor ever just do that for me please i i literally beg you <laughs> Caden Live developers to just make this thing better because it, it it wants to be good. Like it it has all the features that I need. You know, it is it, easy to customize like every other KDE application is. It works well most of the time. But the problem is is when you are editing a video and you spend hours editing a video, if it crashes at the end. It makes you want to take your computer and just throw it across the room and smash it into as many little pieces as possible. Because it's just, like, it always crashes at the end. Like, it, it, it never crashes at the beginning. Like, if it crashes at the beginning, who cares? I haven't spent any time on this yet. I can just start over again. You know? And while I've gotten into the habit of saving things, of course, like, every time I do a cut, I pretty much do a save because I don't want to lose anything. You know that one time that I've forgotten to save? That's when it's going to crash. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little salty. I just want them to make it better. And I wish heartily that I was a good developer or a developer at all, that I could help them. You know, it would be so cool if I could, you know, you know, roll up my, you know, imaginary sleeves because it's like 90 degrees outside and I'm not wearing long, long sleeves, but I could, you know, just dive in and get my hands dirty and try to help them out. But I'm not a developer at all. All I can do is sit here and bitch about it. So I feel useless about the whole situation. And there are no good alternatives. There are just no good alternatives. I, I hear people say good things about DaVinci Resolve. I don't care that it's not FOSS. I, I would I, I would pay money for Adobe Premiere right now. That's how frustrated I am. I just want something that will allow me to do this quickly. Because I don't want to spend three hours on a 30-minute video anymore. Ever again. Ever. Like, seriously never ever again i will just scrap that video if that ever happens again like it's uh, i i can't even begin to tell you how bad that video was yesterday in terms of actually editing it so that's how desperate i am for a good video editor on linux like i would pay money like i f for the most part i think that the adobe creative cloud cloud is like the big like the biggest scam in the history of the scams like that thing is so overpriced it's ridiculous like they know that creators use their products to make money therefore they think that they can charge whatever they want and get away with it which apparently they can you know i mean there's no good alternatives to any of the adobe products really there's nothing out there that is like feature for feature as good davinci resolve probably comes close blender is probably uh, up there but you know for the most part if you want to do creative work adobe has the stuff and therefore you have to pay for it. But I would. Right now, I would pay that money to have a good one. And I don't want to. I want to use Caden Live. And I'm going to continue to use Caden Live because there's not any other good options out there for Linux. But uh, I just desperately want it to be better. I'm so depressed about it, honestly. Like, every time this happens, I think, man, I need a new video editor. And then I go look at the other videos. Like, I downloaded Pativi again today. 
and I'm going to give it a try again. But it's so simple. It's like I I don't mind simplicity, but they they take simplicity to a like a whole new level. Uh, Shotcut looks like it was built in the 1980s. It's basically the audacity of 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 video editors, at least the brief look that I had at it like six months ago. And really, looks doesn't matter, but still, I couldn't get into it. I don't know. Maybe I need to give it another try or something. Maybe there's a, a better option. If you have another option for video editing, I would love to hear it. You can leave those in the comment section below. I need to stop ranting right now. I'm, I've been ranting for 17 minutes. Holy hell. Um, I probably could go on for another 17 minutes because I'm just that frustrated. Anyways, uh, comments in the comment section below if you have any other ideas down there below. Um, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. Uh, I just went over 1,000 followers on Twitter, so... Thanks, everybody who follows me over there. I truly do appreciate it. If you want to help me get to the next thousand, head on over there and hit the follow button. You can hear me rant about uh, Kaden Live pretty much at least once a week because that's about half of my tweets. At least that's the way it seems like has been for the last week or so. Anyways, uh, you can follow me on Mastodon. Uh, you can find those links in the video description. There's a lot of ums there that I'm going to have to cut out. You can follow me on any of my other social media networks. Those links will also be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast, just like all these fine people. So thank you for su supporting me on Patreon and YouTube. Those are all those names that are on your screen right now. I cannot even begin to tell you how grateful I am for everyone who supports me. If you've supported me in the past, you support me right now. Just thank you so much. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you.